So today's guest on Free Your Inner Guru is James Victory. James is an artist, a graphic designer. He's a teacher. He's a leader. I want to share how I connected with James because I think it's pertinent to the bigger conversation that we can have today. Um, I found his book, Feck Perfection, in a bookstore last um, summer. And I loved it because it was tactile. It was pretty. It grabbed my attention. I, I, James, I didn't know who, I didn't know you at all, any of your work. And I picked it up, flipped through the graphics and I, and I, I bought it. So then I was, I live in Toronto and I go to yoga down the street and I put it in my bag to, to ride. I think I was riding that day. Mm -hmm. And after class, I was like, I'm going to give myself the gift of just sitting and reading. And I sat down on a park bench, just not in a like pretty park, not in a peaceful park. This park bench is actually just about 10 or 12 feet off a very busy road um, called mm -hmm. the Danforth here. And I started flipping through it and I read it cover to cover in one go, <laughs> even though it's highly segmented. I couldn't move. I had a tea, a scone, and a book on a summer afternoon. So at that point, I was like, oh, this, this is so, this work is really important. We had a nice date. We, yeah, we do. And, uh, and then I messaged you, and it kind of lost the trail of having you on. And then last week, um, which would have been the second week of March or third week of March, you sent out an email to your database saying, um, something about why your newsletter sucks right now. And I read it and resp I felt like compelled to respond to what you wrote mm -hmm. and what it was about and why you felt your newsletter was sucking and said, Oh, by the way, I sent you a message on Instagram last summer to invite you on my podcast. The mm -hmm. offer still stands. And a week later, here we are. So I think that's very cool. And the timing is very interesting with regards to human beings, creativity, yeah. and what the, I, are you, do you swear? <laughs> you read my book. Yeah, I fear. I swear. <laughs> so like what, literally what the fuck yeah. is, and I'm not, I don't usually curse liberally in my podcast, but I feel like um, if there's ever a time to use, to use whatever language works, yeah. it's right now. Yeah. How are you doing? How is it impacting you? And how are you uh, responding? Yeah, uh, um, yeah. The the, the uh, COVID. Um, I call it the 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 Purell days. Um, the the COVID thing is interesting. Um, you know, one, it's that in that, um, um, it's this highly contagious respiratory disease that sounds really bad and is spreading very quickly. Um, you know, we hear, you know, we hear in, you know, in, you know, we, we hear, uh, 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 Laura, my wife and, uh, and myself just believe that basically everybody's going to get sick, some worse than others, and then we're going to get well, and then we're going to get back to life. But the quarantine and the, um, 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 personal space thing, the six foot rule, the social distancing, um, that, 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 especially the quarantine has added, uh, something else to it, which is really interesting. And I think what we try to do is try to see the good in everything and see what's come out of this and not, not bitch and moan and be lonely, um, and waste our time on Netflix, but to use this time and to use our create creativity and reach out to people and, you know, understand that, that, that everything has a purpose and understand that this is not such a bad thing. And it's basically the whole world is, 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 has been given some time for introspection, some time for reflection, some time to look at their daily routine and, and be curious about it and um, look at their lives and see how much of it is, is bullshit hustle and how much of it is beautiful and um and hopefully when things return to normal uh we don't all return to normal 
Mm-hmm. You know, we, 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 we accept some of this, some of the changes that are, that are happening in our lives. And, you know, to establish a new habit takes, you know, they say it takes 21 days, three weeks. Uh, we're going to have <laughs> three weeks at least to, uh, you know, to instill some new habits. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, hopefully we'll, I mean, you know, hopefully, I mean, not even hopefully, we will all come out better for it. I was having a conversation earlier today on Zoom with a group of people that I, I meet with. They're, um, they are creators. And I happened to mention, hey, I got to go. I need to make sure I have some time to dig back into this book. And I held it up. And one of them started to go, oh, my. And, and so my friend Kelly, who's a designer, she says, you have mm-hmm. to tell him. Your friend Kelly absolutely loves him and his work. And we were just talking about um, the impact of the creative, the potential impact for creative expression or creative self self expression in this time. Mm-hmm. Do you find even in in your at your where you are at in your leadership, are you are you producing more content? Have you shifted what you're talking about? Have you, or is it is it for lack of a better word, business as usual or creation as usual? Has has it? Um, it's certainly not business as usual. And that's one of the, that's one of the effects of, of the, um, of the quarantine is, you know, a lot of my business is I, you know, especially lined the way it was lined up in, you know, it was the way it was set a long time ago was, you know, um, April and May was either people traveling here to be with me was business or me traveling um, um, into to Dallas and the UK and different places uh, in California. Um, and now April and May income is dead. So, um, uh, so it's certainly not business as usual. Um, and I, but I've realized that, that what I need to do f- during this time is, you know, you mentioned the word leadership. I don't know how comfortable I am with that, but yes, to establish a- and maintain a level of um, uh, my voice, uh, in the world and in my work, um, and a level of um, um, calm and truth, and uh, basically these ideas we were talking about before about about um, accepting this these these changes and um, still finding you know um, love and time for ourselves and reflection in this. You know, I've been going, uh, I've been trying to go on. You know, my schedule is kind of crazy with everything going on. We have two small kids here and. Um, <clears throat> trying, you know, still trying to balance life and work. And, um, but I've been going on Instagram live uh, or trying to every day and just being trying to be a sounding board for people and just trying to ask, you know, answer questions and just asking how everybody is. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I want to know. So, um, so, you know, so that's how it all, it's all affected my life and my work. And basically most of what I'm doing right now is planning for, uh, planning for, you know, when, when the weather clears. So in the responses, and this might be a really nice point to to move away so, uh, from the COVID um, challenge, but fear has really been stirred up. Mm-hmm. And as I was thumbing and reading, and and I actually I went and listened to a couple of your recent Instagram lives, uh, and and fear is, is something that you're addressing here. Can we can we dive in there and? and let's leave COVID out of it for, for the time being, and maybe for the rest of the conversation, who knows, mm-hmm. but how you address fear in your work and, and your message around work, fear and, and work and creation is really potent. Um, can you either take us back to how you came to understand that in a really tangible way or what you see in others in a, in a way that, is relatable to someone who who maybe never li- heard either one of us before. I think there's yeah. going to be a lot of new people listening to podcasts, for two months, <laughs> right? Um, you know, the the fear thing is interesting. Um, you can't you can't operate out of fear. You can't you can't you can't do anything out of fear. You can't drive a car <laughs> out of fear. Um, um, and especially with something like like this, where a situation where, I mean, there's so many levels to talk about this. Like, like the thing that, that, that we talk about here is that, you know, since we were talking about COVID, if you um, accept that into your body, the, the fear, 
um, um, you know, the, those thoughts. What happens is, you know, you, 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 you go out into, into the world and you do nothing but invite more. Um, and what happens is you open up your body to, uh, you know, to, 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 oh, to a weakened state. So it's going to be much more susceptible to, to getting sick. So it's kind of like this, you know, we create uh, our own reality. Um, but, you know, what I talk about in the book, I mean, fear is the second chapter, I think, in Fact Perfection. And it's, there's, a, I think, 10 or 11 different articles um, all addressing um, the role of fear in our lives and the role of fear in our creativity. And the first, you know, the first, uh, um, one of the first ideas in there is that, um, is that once we know that we have a voice, once we know that we have something to say, and we, um, um, the first thing that happens is that fear comes in because <clears throat> we realize we have to say it. We have to get it out into the world. And we, we fear that someone may not like it. And my proposal is you are correct. Somebody will not like it, but you cannot let that stop you. You have to move forward anyway, because we're not made to uh, um, appeal to everybody. That's the problem with, that's the problem with television. That's the problem with, you know, with advertising and marketing these days. They try to appeal to everybody. Therefore, they are super successful at making oatmeal and making very staid, very boring products. Mm. You know, um, um, you know, fear is a, fear is a, is, is a funny thing. And um, I have a lot, I have a, a number of uh, people who I go through, uh, who I speak to every week through it, through my, uh, my coaching practice. Um, we call it the breakthrough sessions. And it's a huge idea that comes up all the time, this fear. And what I, what I, the way I explain it to them is like, is this. So, so for example, I have a guy who, um, who suffers from anxiety and uh, his name is uh, Justin, I think. Uh, so I say, Justin, so tell me, you know, you have a therapist, right? He says, yeah. I said, I said, you know, um, how many times a day do you tell yourself that you suffer from anxiety or how many times a day, you know, do you feel anxious? And he says, Oh, a lot. I say, so, you know, uh, so you're practicing it. He's like, what? Yes. I say, you're practicing it. You're practicing fear. You're practicing worry. You're practicing being anxious. Um, you know, and what we should be doing is we should be replacing that, you know, establishing a new habit where we replace that because that's what most of us do. What most of us do is we base our, our actions and our words and our thoughts on the past on, 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 uh, or a shitty prognos prognosis of the future, like it's not going to work out, um, um, instead of, so, we, so we're practicing fear, instead of practicing love, instead of practicing a beautiful future. Instead of doing all the work, you know, the daily work, the hourly work of practicing love. With Justin, I had him get a, a small notebook and carry it around and write down the instances when he was feeling anxious. And we went through that the next week. And, you know, what he found out was that, that the, 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 it was a relatively repetitive pattern of thoughts, mm -hmm. which allowed him to focus on those thoughts you know, and start addressing them and start replacing them with beautiful thoughts, well, you know, because, because, you know, we basically, we basically create a habit of fear. It's interesting that you, um, that you bring that up because in one of the recent episodes on here, I had a, um, an expert in, uh, in depression and mindfulness come on mm. and you're reminding me because you're you're looking at you're you're presenting it as it's a, a practice of thought what you're doing and and it's unconscious so bring it conscious and you're reminding me of what he was talking about in terms of um you know the rumination as a driver of depression and anxiety and yeah. you know versus say pondering with he he laid out a whole bunch of levels of of you know where where is being thoughtful and creative all the way through to yeah. rumination and very grooved thinking yes when you're sitting in your pity potty yeah 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 
and it's yeah. not. Yeah, and what and what you do what you do when you when you take it from that unconscious habit into into consciousness is you you you're you know you're moving it to a new part of the brain. You move it to a, the conscious part of the brain, and that's the you know that's the the, the driver. And then and then you know if you're gonna uh, talk to um, um, Laura Victory, um, uh, uh, my my partner. Um, you know, she would say then, then the next level is that you move it into your body. Yes. You know, so it's not good because we live so much of our, of our time up in our, stuck up in our head and we don't, we're not embodying these things and we're not making them, you know, we're not training our body to, uh, uh, to get rid of these as well. So, and and it was just totally fascinating. Um, and you know, the, 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 the fear in creativity. I mean, I can, you know, when I was teaching at the School of Visual Arts, I taught there for 20 years, you know, people put work up on the wall and I could, you know, I could see the fear. I could see the, the hesitance, the reticence to put a mark on a page. Or if they put something, if they put some truth on the page, what they did then was they basically decorated all around it to kind of, to kind of cover it up because they were afraid to, for that to be the focal point or, you know, or to see in their conversation how they, um, um, we're able to able to able to think about it, but not able to put it on paper. And I'm like, why would you know? Why do you stop yourself? And you know, and that's fear. Fear is just fear is just stopping ourselves. So it's stop, stopping ourselves from you know, especially in a school situation, stopping ourselves from saying something smart or stopping ourselves from saying something stupid. It's crazy. So is it when we when we do that? When we get into to. We're, we're separating from the herd at that point or the crowd. We're standing out. Oh, that's dangerous. Right? That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like I say in the book, if you, you know, if you, if you don't, if, if you don't, you know, if you're always following the, 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 the herd, you know, your view never changes. You know, you're just looking at somebody else's asshole all the time. <laughs> you don't see the sky. You don't see the horizon. And and you don't follow your own path. So do you, do you position or, oh, might have to, I'm going I'm trying to figure out where I want to take this. Do you, okay. do you see this as this, is this ability to stand out, to have a voice? Is it in eight in all of us? Is it something for special outlier people? Is it something for the weirdos? Like what? Um, you know, Laurie, you use that word weirdo. And I think um, people use that word too lightly. The, the, the weirdo is, is a power source. You know, um, we were in, in, in Feck Perfection, I wrote, I think the first line of the book says that we are all born wildly creative. And since writing that book, I've gotten smarter. And I understand that, that <clears throat> what, makes us creative is that we're all born, first of all, we're all born with all the knowledge we need and all the answers. But second of all, we're born weird. We're born as, um, we're born as free thinkers. We're born full of play. We're born full of, 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 of love and potential and light and energy. And what happens is, what happens is parents and what happens is school and what happens is is assimilation um, um, but we have to understand that you know that that our natural default at birth is weird and creative and you know fear fear's role is just to 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 um, you know put a sphincter on that and not let it flow um, because I know, and you probably know that you know being born creative or being or or even being referred to as weird most of your life um that's really hard to do and for me i could you know i could I could write a book at all the times that I was asked you know basically basically all the times I should have really just stopped and said, "Okay, this is enough. I'm just gonna go work in a bank." because this is just too damn hard. It's just too damn hard. But now my, now my job and my role, well, my job is to, is, to, is to get paid to be James Victory. And my role is to, is to teach or coach other people to, 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 to want that for themselves. Because that's the place to be. That's when you're, when you're using your weirdness as your superpower. And understanding that if you follow that light, it will bring you everything that you want and need. 
And, and to go backwards in our conversation, since my business has been shut down and I'm, and I'm, and I'm free to, I'm free to make a prognosis, you know, to invent the, the next couple of months, that's all I'm doing is taking that weirdness and that creativity and trying to, trying to figure out how to, how to, how to open the fire hose even further. So people listening to this, given we framed the conversation. There are people listening. <laughs> but people for the, for the listeners who might be hearing this and this is you're one of my first conversations since this whole quarantine and lockdown people are thrown into a fear state it's very triggering and even in in my own situation my husband was one of the first people in canada to lose his job because he works for a small regional airline yeah you know, we came back from Hawaii just as things were starting to get crazy. Should have stayed. Yeah, with just with a whole ton of bills to pay and a sudden upheaval. And so what I'm hearing you say is use it. Mm, direct it. What I'm wanting to say is direct that energy. Yes. Yes, because that's exactly what it is. It's just, you know, it, it, it's just energy. It's negative energy, but it's energy. And energy, nonetheless, everything is energy. And yes, if you can direct it, and especially what people are doing now is like, you know, I found out the, on the Instagram Live thing, talking to people, and they're like, whoa, whoa. I'm like, no, man, you put that in your work. Put that in your work. Don't just let it, don't sit in that. Don't let it pollute your body. Don't let it, don't let it start bringing out the bad chemicals and just start like, you know, um, um, darkening, um, you know, the, the, the clouds around you. Put that in your work. Find some channel for it. Redirect it. Turn it into a creative energy. Yes, totally. And it's, all, it's always there for it. And, and there's so many people that I see right now who um, are now, like their fear, say, of being on video online has completely diminished yeah because there's a bigger fear yeah and it's it's dropped them us into survival mode mm -hmm. and the driver is their their comfort zone has suddenly either expanded or the barrier on it has evaporated mm -hmm. and there i had a call with a bunch of people last week um on on these community and connection, um, this is part of my response was to, to open up Zoom and collect a broader community because mm -hmm. what are my gifts that I can bring to, to right now to serve people while I can't really go out? Yeah. And suddenly, certainly I can create and we are, I am, but what I'm seeing is collectively they're in a sense, they're scared shitless, but they're also braver. And I think that's really interesting to see the acceleration and that it's pretty much everyone is affected in some way. Yeah. Varying yeah. degrees. It's all of us at once instead of people going through their fears, you know, asynchronously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and breaking through them in their own due time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think what's happening um, uh, online um, it has been fascinating uh, and the, the amount of people and not just, not just high end creatives and high end musicians and, you know, but um, everybody sharing and I'm, I'm telling everybody to share. I'm telling, I'm saying, listen, you know, you know, somebody said, well, I don't have an audience. I'm like, you're on Instagram. If you've got 20 people, that's a fucking audience. That's a start. Why do you poo poo what you have? You know, this gift that you have. Um, you know, and again, that's fear doing that is saying, well, who's going to listen to me, right? Mm -hmm. um, because you don't know, you haven't tried. How does that fit into, I guess, fear, fear and resistance? It, it's one and the same in, in your mind or? Yeah, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a researcher or, or a sci you know, neuroscientist, uh, but yeah, they're, they're, they're one in the same. Uh, resistance is a, is a, is a, is a nicer word for it. Um, um, you know, it actually opens it up to a number of, you know, all the different levels of sight, you know, of, uh, of fear that we have. It's not just, you don't just have fear. You have fear of, you know, fear of um, your voice. 
you know, fear of fear of talking out loud uh, on a camera, fear of what you look like or fear of, you know, you know, all these things that your ego is protecting you for, you know, because that's the ego's job is to protect us, is to keep us safe. But it, ultimately, all it does is keep us small or keep us poor or keep us um, keep us from sharing our gifts. Right. So, yeah, resistance, uh, fear, uh, whatever stops you. Tell us a little bit about your, um, your process when you work with people. I know like play figures into it mm -hmm. and seeing your work as a gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the, the way I work with people, it comes out, it, you know, there's two different levels. There's, um, there's when I work with them, uh, one-on-one -on -one in like a coaching situation, an online coaching situation, um, that is, um, basically becoming, um really good friends and i have a i have a i guess kind of a rep reputation of having kind of um kind of fatherly tough love um where i'm able to call people on their bullshit and they go oh yeah you're right uh, uh. And say, okay now you know i had the, i had this wonderful wonderful guy who um um We've spoken a number of times and we have a number of more conversations to go. And it was, it was just fascinating. He came to me because he wanted me to fix his business. And I'm like, okay, let's talk. So we're talking and, and he's had this business for, for a number of years and he wants to keep people, but they, they're all of a sudden they want to leave. And he said, there's a motivation thing. And there's a, there's a level of creativity that isn't being, you know, ex, um, that isn't being played with. And there's like, and he's got all these, he's got all this, um, um, problems with his staff and we are having this conversation and, and I said I said um, let's just call him John I said you know John I said listen I'm gonna tell it to you it's not about your work it's not about your staff I said you're bored and he was just like Is this never about your work? Is it, people come to me with their creativity issues, but it's not about the creativity. It's about it's about them and their energies and what where their energy is going or not going. And he was very he was very gracious and accepted that and was like, you know what? I didn't want to see it, but I see it. And I said, I said, then I said, okay, John, tell me about your relationship. Tell me about your wife. And he, he's like, fuck. I said, okay, listen, after this phone call or tonight go home and apologize and say, listen, I have dropped the ball. I don't know how long it's been, but I'm sorry. And let's get back, let's make this work, you know? So he's been, and, and, and so I've been giving him tools and stuff to, so he can work on that energy and so he can get more excited about what he's been doing because he's been doing it for a long time. It's understandable. It's been, you know, he's been doing it for a long time and doing it the same. And he needs to, he needs to, he needs to, you know, reinvigorate some energy and maybe letting personnel go would be just the right thing for that. You know, so there's, that's the one-on-one -on -one kind of um, attitude. And then we, and then we work in, uh, we work with people when we travel or bring, bring groups here and we do, um, you know, kind of uh, corporate workshops. And the one we have going right now that um, we're using is called purposeful play and that is yes to get people to get people back to their weirdness to get people back to their creativity to remind them of why they got started in the first place to remind them of that that innate power and that innate voice they have and you know the problem with creative people is they get into business and creativity and business don't always go to well together mm -hmm. um, because you're always kind of scrambling for money or kind of people pleasing for money. Um, and what happens is if you start that practice like that, you never know what you're capable of. One of the, you, will, you will wake up one day extremely frustrated. One of the, the chapters in your book that I, um, that stuck out for me is what you've, you distinguish, I think it's like, you're working for God or you're working for yeah money uh, money yeah yeah there's yeah. some work you do for God and some work you do for money basically basically what I what I mean by that is like like I approach every job as a God job and that's a lowercase g it's not it's not you know the man whoever whoever or woman whoever your thing is your deity um, um, as an opportunity to do great work every job I approach like that but I possibly do not have every client that approaches it that way. Mm. So at some point, if it, if it's not a God job and it turns into a money job and then I get it done and get paid. 
and I re remember, um, I just, I just read through it again a few before we came on here and it's like, get done, get paid, move on. Mm -hmm. And it made me think. Yeah. About, and don't, and don't, and don't, don't hang on to the glommy feeling of either what could be soul. I saw it as God being like inspired work, soul fulfilling work. Yes. You know, and don't, it's not necessarily, it might be about you, but it might not be about you, but move on. And yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's another level of the resistance is like when, 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 when creatives choose to, uh, to, uh, you know, fight. And I understand that you want, you have a vision and you want to see it, you know, see it, see it clear that way. But, but, you know, you also have a client and, or you have a client and you have marketing and you have these people and these people, and you know, they all have an opinion and we all have to kind of be open to that. Mm. It, and when you say creative, we're not really just talking about design work here, are we? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, not at all. Not at all. No, you can, you know, you can be, you can be, um, 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 you can be a creative bus driver. You can be a creative banker, you know, uh, um, it's just about the level of play that you bring to work, right? I mean, a bus driver, a bus driver can change your day. You know how? Smiling. By saying hello. Like. By being upbeat. By being, by being them, their own weird self. Yeah. I mean, that's creativity. <laughs> it's also kindness, but, but, you know, there, there's an aspect to that. It, 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 it's a, it's, it's a, it's a level of, it's a level of, um, you know, so there's in, 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 there's a chapter in the book in, um, um, that, uh, 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 work is serious play. And in it, we, I talk about the, the, the subject, the objective of work and the subjective and the objective of work is to get it done, fulfill the task, do what you're asked, but the subjective is the part that we leave out most of the time, and it's how you do that. Whether you do it with 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 um, with humor or sex appeal or a level of 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 sadness or whatever you whatever you personally bring to that, you know, a chef can make um, can make a meal that's hot and tastes good. That's the objective, but the subjective is that they could further create an experience. They could further, you know. Um, entertain or 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 educate or you know um, um, completely you know um, confuse you even um, and I and I think I think I think that's what separates um, a, a creative soul from from um, a worker bee. <laughs> when we look at oh, there's a couple of places I want to go right now. Mm -hmm. So earlier today in this conversation I was referring to, one of the women said, I just, you know, I started listening to your podcast, but I started at episode one. And can you imagine what my reaction was? Excellent, wow. I'm gonna show, yeah, it was like, that was not my reaction. My, my, rea my reaction was my head went right down into my hands. Oh, no, no, no. no. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is great before getting on here with you, because that was that, and she said, no, I did it deliberately because yeah. I wanted to hear your progression. Yeah, that's and awesome. we were talking about that. And, it, and, it's, and it's, I mean, it's about, I have a very strong um, perfection streak. Ah. That, that, that is, remember I was talking about those things that are dropping away? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like my life's work to drop it away because yeah. I was very schooled for perfection. Yeah. Um, but as as you learn the skills and accumulate the the flow and the process that's one thing but I, what is happening and this is i think everybody's all of our um potential is like if especially with the introduction of a catalyst mm -hmm. is what's next like what what is working what isn't working and how can i bring more of myself to the work yes instead of compartmentalizing and i think when when people lose their creativity, it's still in there. It's still inside them, but it's been compartmentalized and ignored and potentially undervalued. Oh, not potentially, yes. 
mean, it's, self, it's a self-worth issue, yes. It's worse than undervalued. It's, it's, you know, it's a self-worth issue. It's a lack of self-love issue. It's a lack of self-trust. It's a lack of self-compassion. Yeah, no, it's a lot. It's a lot. So herein lies the opportunity, right? To, to find new ways. And the opportunity was always there, is always there. And I'm not even sure it would be much of a different conversation except for, you know, talking about a, a, a universal catalyst. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see come out of anyone who is having a, a, a challenging time right now has a sense or thinks or believes they have something to say or make and, and how they could move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, what I'm, what I've been seeing is people um, pulling out their sewing machine again. What I've been seeing is people um, um, going back to those, those, those crafts and those practices that they, that they, that they left behind. Um, I mean, I've, I've pulled out, you know, I've owned a guitar for 20 years and, um, you know, never really learned it. So I pull that out because I just because I like getting good at stuff. Um, so I'm hoping that that is going to that is going to um, 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 that is going to be happening around the world. Like I've got actually today, somebody somebody wrote me or messaged me through Instagram and said, hey, I'm a banker but I have a lot of downtime right now. And I've realized that I, you know, I really like to draw and I really like to do these. And I looked on her Instagram and I'm like, you know, I wrote her and I'm like, this, these are pretty good. If you want to like a 10 minute call about how you're going to switch from, you know, from, 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 from banking to, because most people who come from other fields, if they don't, you know, they bring a different vocabulary to it. They bring another way of seeing to mm -hmm. it. You know, that's worthy. That's, that's a value. Don't just discount you know, everything that's brought you to this point has value. If, if you allow it, if you let it in, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, you know, my, uh, I think the best way that when people are describing work, I think the best, the best way they start isn't once upon a time, they, when they're talking about their work or they're talking about, you know, what they, what they do for a living when they say, when I was a kid, Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson, astrophysicist, you know, a genius. He says, when I was a child, he says, I went out under the night sky. He says, and the universe called me. He said, you take, you know, or you take any athlete or any chef or any musician or any, you know, when I was a kid, my father and I, backyard, until, until, until it was dark and we couldn't see, throwing a ball back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know, that kind of stuff. When I was a kid, that's really powerful. And I think what people are doing, and that's the weird yeah, it's going back to that to that original default, um, and I think people are going back and 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 realizing that. Um, and yes, this this catalyst, um, you know, you need a catalyst, you know, uh, or some fear, or, yeah. or you know, whatever. Um, um, but I, you know, my hope is is it, 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 is that more people realize the potential they have and the, and what they're capable of. One of the things I. Th my, I think is universally being discovered is that they, they have more time than you <laughs> realized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the world of sport is shut down. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, la I'm laughing for so many reasons. I, within this household and my entire, I come from a long line of sports enthusiasts. Sports nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, my challenge with that has always been, um, I, I'm a horrible spectator. And so I, I resist the pull to the couch to uh, what well, I'm interested, but I have to actively resist it to come up here and create. Yeah. And so like the vacuum of time and then what we replace, what we, we replace it with. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and, and, and replacing it with quality and not replacing it with, 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 uh, you know, bitching and moaning and getting sultry and getting upset and, you know, being, being, just being conscious and aware. Let's, let's um, conjure up some things that people can do. Cause as you're talking, I'm getting ideas and maybe it's flowing back and forth, but you know, when you're saying about that less time, 
about like the the scroll on 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 social media you mm -hmm. and i are both in social media but mm -hmm. to me this is this is an ideal time to go you know go through the feed and and cull things that are not making you feel good yeah we need everything to that helps like we need to be informed this is my opinion we need to be informed but we need to take it in doses and and not allow ourselves to be overwhelmed and to curate what's coming coming in and i've been saying that for years and 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 now it's like oh the pendulum's swinging people are uh, some people i know very very well are saying oh maybe i should start taking my news one once a day i was yeah. like oh that's yeah. kind of like what i've been trying to <laughs> to yeah. bring in so yeah. there's I, yeah. openness yeah, and I think the curating, curating um, what you what you feed on, you know, curating your diet is really important. Like, like I know people who basically just have you know the news on all the time, and I'm like, that's just poisoning you. <laughs> that's just that's just that's just feeding you gloom and doom because that's their job. That's like a you know a daily shark attack thing. You know, it's just terrible. Um, um, but you know, yes, curating what you, what, what you, you know, you are what you watch and you are, you become who you hang out with and starting to, starting to curate that and bring that, you know, bring that level up. If you're somebody who's constantly sitting at 65, you know, you need to, you know, you know, it might be time to go up to 80 or go up to, you know, uh, assume a hundred, um, you know, and start if, if you're not spending time watching sports, maybe you're just spending time watching Ted talks or watching, uh, the do lectures talks or, you know, um, um, or, or, um, you know, for me watching, um, uh, uh guitar lesson, YouTube stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, where you are right now, is it how you're, are you in Texas? Is that correct? Yeah. Is, outside are you, of, Austin. Outside are you of Austin. Outside of Austin. Okay. And is it, how locked down is it? And, and, what uh, you know, the, like? yeah, they're not, they're not pulling anybody off the street. Um, but it's like, you know, they're, they're highly suggesting staying at home and, you know, not traveling. Uh, you know, but there's, there's people out, there's the constructions going on. Mm -hmm. uh, people are going to the grocery store. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, um, gloves and masks. Um, you know, there's a, there's a coffee shop that we like that is, they've just, they've switched over to basically drive through, you know, a lot of the, you know, all the, all the restaurants are shut down. So it's all like you order and you, you know, you drive up and you, you know, you wait and they, they bring it to you. So, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's interesting. And the, you know, and like even our coffee shop pals, you know, there's a level of creativity that they need to, they needed to assume in order to stay in business. And I think a, a level of also resourcefulness, even say right now in the kitchen, as a very practical example. Yeah. Like, um, my, um, Tony went to Costco this morning while I was here, and uh, he came back, and they're doing business very differently at, at Costco right now. Like, you have very much keeping people on a straight, well, curvy path, but keeping them on a path as well as. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the things that we wanted, they aren't there, whether you buy hoard, whether it's hoarding or whether it's, it's, you know, the baking aisle is, is depleted. So people are going into their pantries and may not be able to get, I never thought I'd see it. Like this is, and this is where the, the creativity conversation comes in is that, okay, so you can't get cocoa for your birthday on Sunday, that chocolate cake. You'll have, probably have to go somewhere else, but I'm not going to make a junket out of it because that's not good for anybody right now. Yeah. And what do we do instead? Uh huh. We get yeah. Inside well, of ourselves. Yeah, and you know, and it, two things, Laura. Yes, that, and also it goes back to the fear thing because um, there's not a scarcity, but people are creating one, which is crazy. It's just kind of crazy. I went to the store the other day, and there was no pasta. How is there? How, how is there no pasta? <laughs> Uh, but what was your what was your question, Laura? Yeah. So no, just about implementing more of a point about bringing that that creative spirit into whatever this this yeah. gap. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, back to the objective and the subjective. Um, um, like for my coffee shop or for the restaurants around here, um, you know, there's one restaurant that will um, that will 
deliver um the, you can't drive up and get it but they will deliver um margaritas like that's establishing that's using a level of creativity and establishing themselves as um as a leader and as a friend and as somebody who you know they they understand that you know that that times are tough and they that so there's a level of humor in there um you know so not only not only uh, a business trying coping and being somewhat creative to survive but using that subjective part of of creativity of humor of uh you know whatever one of the things that i find very funny is like the businesses that are allowed to be open like no restaurants or no pool halls uh, which sucks for me but um uh you know no none of that stuff but liquor stores those are those are allowed to be open which i think is fascinating the human condition you know we you know if you yeah. if you shut liquor stores down people would freak out yeah here um here they're government owned and controlled so um oh yeah that's right so my step my my stepson works at a liquor store in british columbia and they've been closed down but they're mm -hmm. privately owned here they're owned by the government which implies more control yeah more easily monitored so they're they're open Mm -hmm. so it's just it's different to see how different geographies segments of society are responding but some things yeah. really seem to be universal yeah. you know when people said time. you know it, it was funny because people said you know in the states we heard that you know italy italy completely shut down and they and they uh you know uh, it, it it's it's helped the spread um but in, in the in in the states you kind of can't do that because it's not an american ideal to be you know to lose your mobility right as the Canadian in the conversation, I'm going to choose to be polite right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. know, I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Just as we, close, as we, uh, we close off, I want to just come right back around to something you, you just said about the, uh, the, the restaurant that's, that's, uh, delivering margaritas. You, you, I hope I paraphrase you right. Um, you said they're, they're being creative, resourceful and innovative and establishing themselves as leaders. Yes. At the top of this conversation, and I called you a leader. You said you were com you weren't sure how you were comfortable with that, but I think it's a beautiful example of how creativity and, and innovation and getting outside of yourself drives leadership and drives yes. change. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, part of the problem with the 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 world right now is you know um, creativity on a cultural level comes from the top down, and the world has very few creative leaders right now isn't that the truth the creative creative leadership is you know is is you know i mean especially in the united states oh my god um um and it's interesting to think that i have some role of leadership and i have some responsibility to an audience um um and i can't think about it all i can do is all i can do is keep moving and keep doing what i'm doing and try to come out of a place of um love and compassion and creativity and um um to be of service and that's the kind of leader that we all need and yeah, that's the kind of leaders that that we want to yeah mutually encourage and support which yes is those, yeah the people those are the people we follow those are the people that we will we we will follow now and we will continue to follow when things go back to normal from yeah from your lips right all the way yeah yeah, yeah. james i knew it was gonna i had a sense that it would be awesome to have you here on the podcast um the timing is just in its own way a form of perfection <laughs> um, and uh yeah and it's just it's just been such a pleasure thank you for being generous with your time your thoughts thank you laura i appreciate yeah. it it's been a blast I, it's been a joy to talk to you <laughs>